is, this is where the action are, folks. Well, no, Mr. Sinclair. You're very good, sir. How are you? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty oh, good. Got it rain. Right. That was a little lesson right there for y'all. That you want that dog to really want that bite. You want that bite, and you don't give it to him right away. Then all of a sudden, you pop on screen and you give him the bite. There you go. There That's what is. we're doing. Yeah, this is a. <laughs> this is, hey. There you go. Think inside the box sometimes, right? Yes, right. Exactly. Exactly. So. And speaking of thinking outside, we're going to go way outside the box tonight. Yep. We're going to do something that I don't think a lot of people have ever seen. You? I don't think so. Little little guard dog stuff. And yep. Yeah, we're we'll going to get a few little more of the intricate in, intricacies. Intricacies. In intricacies. 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 <laughs> Mr. Curious, my français is kicking in, so my English is going he's, bad. He's, he's French Canadian. You got to forgive him, folks. Right. Mr. Curious. <laughs> Intricacies, huh? <laughs> I'm thinking about but that fricassee. That's what I was thinking about right there. Yeah, he's thinking about fricassee and some shrimp. He yeah, that's all. Hey, we're talking Lobsters, about a while ago. Yeah, we were talking food a while ago. So, <laughs> guard dog business. What do you think about it, Mr. Mr. Agitator? There's, there's, let's get to start with this one thing. There's... Everyone's familiar with the common terms in personal protection, decoys. So everything in personal protection comes from a sport. And the guy who's getting bit, there's two titles. And, and what was originally Schutzen is now IGP. You're called the helper. Mm -hmm. In French Ring, when it came over here, they called him a decoy. Neither term implies you are in any way a trainer. Right. So, and I know a lot of people put on a sleeve or a suit and tell everybody I'm a dog trainer, but that ain't the way it works. Yeah. Because usually in sport or French ring, this is sport now, that the dogs are already trained. So you're out there, you, you need to know what you're doing. Right. Your moves and your coordination right. and what right. to do what. Right. And how to keep your dog lit up. The dog already knows how to light up. Right. And and that's why they call them a helper or a decoy. Well, and a helper in, in IGP is there to make the dog show as well as he can show on the yep. trial field. A decoy in French ring, because in French ring it's, a, it's an opposition thing. The decoy is trying to make the dog miss. So... He's standing there to get bit, but he ain't there to help the dog. So what you're saying is IGP is to show the dog standards, and French ring is to make the dog not fail, but it's, for the, it's, more, it's more decoy oriented. Right, right, right. And you got to remember, both of these sports were started, oh, I think over yeah over a century, over a century ago, ago, yeah. And they were they were started as breed certification tests. Yes. Dog had the cojones to keep the breed name alive. Right, right. And was worthy of the title. Right. Of we a purebred want, dog. Right. We want to breed this one because they've proven that they have the ability. And they have excelled at it. Right. So, slightly different jobs for a decoy and a helper, mm -hmm. a ring decoy or a sport decoy or a Schutzen decoy or an IGP decoy, whatever, <clears throat> whatever term you want to use. Uh, then there is for a guard dog bite person, where which we still I still use the old Kohler term of agitator, mm -hmm. which in itself implies that the guy getting bit's got an active role. He's got a job to do. He's got to agitate the dog. Yes, and you teach a dog how to get ag agitated also. Right. If right. You don't take dogs that are already trained. Some come in, you know, but for the most part, the dogs start from ground zero. Yep. Ground zero. Yep. Dog, puppies, seven, eight months, nine months, depending on what kind of dog you have. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm partial to canines myself, the teeth. Yeah. You're going to start biting, you yeah. know, but you start play with them and you got to start them off. You know, you just build them up, but start from ground zero and build a dog up to where he's, where he needs to be. Right. And it, so in, in the guard dog business, the, the business of the guard dog, Probably at any given day when I was at the height of my guard dog business, at any given day you walk into my kennel, we would have 20 to 30 dogs mm -hmm. at all times. Um, 
<clears throat> of those 20 to 30 dogs, maybe five had been purchased for that purpose. Again, it's a business. So you're trying, you know, you, you want to get by as much as you can for as cheap as you can. So a lot of the dogs that, that you can get in the guard dog business are these dogs that people call aggressive. You know, they're problem dogs. Dirty dogs. Yeah, yeah. And if there's a guard dog business in town, instead of calling the Humane Society to dump their dog, they call the guard dog company. They're taking care of the guard dog company probably anyway. Right. At least he won't be euthanized. So. Right. Well, that, yeah, exactly, exactly. We saved a lot of dogs' lives that way. but. That put, presents a whole different problem from f that you're going to see in training for the average person where people come to the trainer with a puppy that they've raised or things of this nature. Now you got a dog that, you know, I'll never forget, I saw we had a, a maybe a Great Dane Airedale mix. I don't know. Absolutely the scariest dog I've ever been around in my life. Uh, as long as I live, I'll never forget him. And this dog hated my guts, hated my guts. I had one driver who could handle him, and an old man had brought him to us, and he'd been in this old man's backyard, but the old man was, his family was, he was infirmed. He couldn't keep the dog anymore. The dog latched on to one Randy Eikhoff, if you're out there, one, one handler, and that was the dog, that was, the, and, and Randy is what happened in the guard dog business to give y'all a little, guard dog story you know you, you're responsible to getting to putting your dogs in this person's business when they close and then you're responsible for getting the dog out of the business so they can open their own business and this particular beast uh, was at a clinic at a, at a, a facility that um, real important big contract that we had they had a guard dog and then they had guards and so important and it was a serious it was a place where they needed a, a real badass dog and Randy had a flat on the van going to get going on his, on his route to pick up the dogs and this facility had to be opened and they were not open because he was on the side of the road trying to patch his tires and get his truck going so he could get over and pick. So that left nothing but moi. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And the dog loved Butch too. Didn't yeah. He? This dog. So, you know, I just, you just, you just got to do what you got to do. I just opened the gate. I had the key. That's a plus. I wasn't being violent or kicking or climbing or nothing. And I stepped inside quietly, and there was a whole bunch of people waiting to get in, and he was up there just staring at everybody. And I thought, okay, I'll slip in the gate, slip a little slip lead around him, and try to hold the big subtle gun until Randy got there. To give you an idea of how scary this dog was, he, like I said, there's, it's two eight-foot gates, mm -hmm. eight feet tall. And there was just, and there were people lined up out in front of him, and he was going up and down looking at everybody. And I slipped open the gate, everyone, <laughs> everyone cleared. I jumped in, closed the gate real quick, and I talked to him. And he came up to me, and he looked at me, and I had a little slip lead set up, and I set it over the back of his neck and dropped it down over his head, and he looked up at me, and he just raised a lip. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I just turned. Now, where are you going to go? I got innocent people on the outside, and I'm an innocent person on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> and about that time, somebody said, there's the driver, there's the driver. And Randy comes around the corner on two wheels, <laughs> oh, man. going as fast as he can. Uh -huh. And he pulls right up in front of them gates, and this big old dog, he, he looked at me, and, and the curl had gone to where he'd, he was, because he was kind of standing there looking at me, and he'd gone from standing there looking at me, curling the lip, to just kind of bowing up, mm. and he was looking right up. And he didn't have to look real high, because he was about this tall, about chin high as it was. 
and he's looking up at me, and he's just got all them grinners showing, boy. I mean, it's just a, it, was, it looked like a piano with the ivory keys, buddy, mm. let me tell you. And about that time, Randy opens, he hits the gate, hits, jumps out of the van, opens the gate, hollers at him, and the dog looks over, looks, looks at me, looks at Randy, looks back at me. I ain't moved, folks. As one of my customers in the same position said once upon a time, mm -hmm. had St. Peter call me at that moment, I'd had to say no. You support. weren't going there. I ain't going. I ain't moving. And Randy hollered at him, and he and he <laughs> runs over there licking Randy all over, you know. Randy loads him up, puts him in the van, walks over to me, and says, "Are you all right?" I never thought I'd admit this in public. <laughs> I, I looked at him and I said, am I, am I, am I, am I all right? <laughs> I was stuttering so bad, I could not even take a breath. So that's, that's a little bit of what you can get into in the guard dog business. Mm -hmm. So you're getting all these dogs from you don't know what. Some of them are great, a lot of them ain't so great. But our agitator has to be able to bring these dogs who don't have formal training into a manageable creature. Mm -hmm. And there's things that we do, there's tools that we use that I don't think you'll see it at many of the sport dog or police dog training facilities. Um, the, the biggest difference between the dogs that are trained now for personal protection and, and police work for that matter, is they're, they're primarily counting on dogs bred with a high reactivity in prey drive. Mm -hmm. Guard dogs don't get that opportunity because if it's all prey drive, but they're on a site, remember, they're all by themselves. There's, there's nobody at three in the morning to help them if this guy picks up a crowbar and goes to banging them in the head. So pure, that ain't the way to go. You gotta be, a, you gotta dodge your way too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to instill a balance here. Exactly, and that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness the early, when Schutzen first came to this country, I, thank you very much, because they taught me that value of, of balance, prey and defense, you want them equally. If you don't kick in the defense, because in defense, you got a choice, fight or flight. So it's one thing to send a dog after a fleeing felon and have the dog hit him from behind and roll him on the ground and just get all over him. It's an entirely different story to have a dog by himself at three in the morning, hear something, run up and meet some big sucker who's got no telling what to pick up, scream and holler at the dog, throw things at him as he's coming, approaching. In other words, kick the dog. This is, this is not someone running. This is not someone presenting a prey driven move. This is someone standing his ground, daring this dog to come further. So now, this, this, the assailant or the perp is on defense. Yes. Which is running away. But now he's turned and fight or flight, he's standing and fighting. So he's going on the offense now. Yep. So the, the roles reverse. The roles are reversed. They need to reverse. Right. You know, because some people are, they don't know what the guy's on, could be, you know, oh, won't feel nothing and just, you know, I saw a guy punch a 185 yeah. pound Great Dane in the jaw one I time. Remember that Tori told us that? Yep. A couple hired, ago, yeah. Hiring a kite, boy, he lit up like a Christmas didn't, tree. And walked off and didn't get yeah. out of it. Yeah. So, for a guard dog, you have to know that when pushed into defense, when threatened, you have to know that he's going to choose fight over the flight. That's the biggest difference between most of these dogs. Now, here's. Here's an interesting correlation, as I discovered with dealing with, with individuals who got our dogs who were in bad situations, domestic violence victims, which was a kind of a specialty of mine, dogs for that, those type victims. The, <clears throat> the civilian dog needs to be more like a guard dog than a military or police dog. Yeah. Because in both those instances, there's a squad there to back the dog up. In both those cases, you're probably gonna have someone fleeing from you, so it's a prey drive thing. In a civilian application- They're coming in. 
these are you got a home invasion. There's two or three of them kicking kicking your door down, coming at you. Yeah, that's defense. Yes, sir. So you also don't have a squad backing up your dog if he stops these people. That's up to you, and you've got to put yourself in danger. So I think a really efficient security dog should have more of the guard dog type training. Balance. Yeah, balance. Because you're on the street. Right. And you're home. Yeah. It's not yeah. It's not just one application. A dog is multifunctional. Right. And is needed to have different facets of the protection training systems to assimilate himself to actually do the job he needs to do where he's at and know where when to do this and when to do this. Right, right. And even on the, on the street, you want defense too. Oh, yeah. You want to stop people. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want a dog going after somebody or going out. Right. With the, the whole six foot of safety and everything else. Yeah. That's security. defensive also. Yep, yep. It's all defensive until a dog is sent. That's right. Then, and, then and it keeps then, it to play. Then, then it <laughs> but you got to make sure he wants to sin. That's why you've got to make sure yes. in, in a defensive situation he's choosing the fight over the flight. Yes. Now, here's one of the little things we use. And, and of course, you obviously can't have an equipment-oriented dog. Exactly. This is, this is a buck 25 burlap sack from uh, uh, any feed store. Yep. We wrote, this, is, this is the foundation, the most valuable tool in the guard dog business, mm -hmm. for me at least. When you're agitating, we start our dogs off with, all, with these. And the beauty of this is, once you start agitating a dog, in canine pro sports, which by the way, we got, we got some news on that coming up mm -hmm. here in a minute. Uh, we in canine pro sports the first exercise is a person standing in civilian clothes in front of a dog and you say sick them and this dog better hit the end of that leash and act like a banshee mm -hmm. so one of the ways we that's the alert that stops a prospective attacker dead in his tracks where he follows through and actually attacks you so that's a very valuable lesson for a real guard dog or protection dog this is how we start all our dogs and their bite work. Because I can take this and I can stick it under my arm and I can go, if you get some, this one's a little bigger and thicker. You can also get some that are thinner. You can stick them, I'll stick them back in my belt, behind my, <clears throat> behind my back, tuck them up under my belt, and I'll go in. Center it. I'll go, <laughs> where are we going? I don't want to talk to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we'll, we can go in, Scott will go in, and he'll work these dogs, stalking, slow, kicking them into defense. There's nothing, there's no equipment for the dog to concentrate on. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do when we're starting a guard dog is make the dog concentrate on the man. We don't have to test for equipment happiness because we're going to see them looking at the man in the eye, even in the fight. They are looking at the man. Not, at, not here. Not here. They look. They look here. Here. You look at your leg. Do you like bites? Yeah. They, they know. The dog. You're challenging that dog right here. The dog right. is looking at you. His peripherals and everything else. When you pop asleep, he'll hit you sleep. Yeah. Exactly. But you want a dog hitting the dead center. You want him looking at you all the time. High center mass. Even on on bites. Right. We have dogs here that. I have staring contests. Oh yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, and when they're staring a man in the eye, they may have his arm, they may have his leg, but they know they're getting the man. Okay, so there's a mis huge misconception <clears throat> about the use of sleeves, suits, and all this other stuff that I've learned the hard way, of course, like most of my lessons have been. Um, by by getting them all agitated, there's the word. Mm -hmm. and keeping a bite surface out of sight, you get the dog keying on the man when they hear a command. That's what you've got to have in a guard dog business. You've got to have a dog looking at a human and knowing that he's going to fight that human. Simple as that. You know, another thing with these burlaps are nice. You're not always presenting repetitious presentations in the sleeve. Right. I can pull out this side, this side. I can pull out my leg. You can pull out everywhere. Right, so it's right. A, and it's the dog's looking at motion. Right. I'm looking at the sleeve. What body part's going to twitch the first? Even with eye contact. Right. You know, 
Yeah. So, so maybe you can elaborate a little better than I can, but it's just. Well, it look. Think of it this way: the sleeve is not what the dogs taught to bite. The sleeve, the arm, the armpit, the leg, whatever body part he's going to nail, is incidental. It's just happens to be there when the dog already goes for the attack. So you're working, a, we're, I'm working a dog and he's ready to launch and he's just in a frenzy to kill me. And as he launches, then I'll pop an arm up or then I'll pull the sack out. In other words, he's already launched. His target is me, high center mass, just like you shoot, same way. But just as he goes for the bite, what I do is I then pop up the sleeve. You'll see most of your sport decoys and even your police decoys, they're gonna approach the guy and you'll see them. They'll be slapping the sleeve and shaking it up and down. And we don't do that in the guard dog business. That's one reason we use the sack so extensively. And once the dogs, once their drives have been triggered properly on by command, it doesn't matter what they're biting. All that matters is they are taking out what they perceive as a threat because we want that defense in. We want them to think they're threatened. We want them to be in it to win it, <laughs> so to speak. Also, there's a multi, uh, multi perp. You can use them more in one way. Basically, yeah. when you get a new dog coming in, the dog, to build the dog's courage, to build his confidence, mm -hmm. start further, you know, start yeah. further away. Yeah. I'm going to flirt. And once he gets the confidence, he's winning. It's a game at first. He's yeah. winning. Yeah. Then you come in then on the you, dog. Right. Then you come in. You come into the dog. Because although you don't want to come over top of that dog when it's a puppy. And so some dogs don't care. Right. Oh, yeah. And in the guard dog business is what Mr. Kohler said. You're going to see fight or flight right mm -hmm. if, from the first time out. If he flights, they don't work in that way. Right. And I don't believe in that. I believe that we can train those dogs to become active. Right. You know, it's a personal, this is for people's houses, you know. I mean, yeah. it all correlates together, but you build them up, build them up, then you start coming with this. And we have dogs here right now that we're working that don't buy sleeves at all. They are 100% on, on sacks. On sacks. And those dogs are pretty damn good. Yeah. And, they'll, and hit a, they'll hit a sleeve, but oh, you know, yeah. we, when we do civil agitation and civil work, they're yeah. on point. They're out for the man. Yeah. And, and, and to go more of the versatility of this sack, so you're taking a dog, he's never been to this place before in his life, and you expect to put him out there in this strange yard and expect him to, to protect it. How do you know he's going to? Well, there's, there's, there's something we call fence kicking. And typically what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a dog on, on the lot, and there's a lot of variables. Don't any, when we're dealing with in the guard dog business, everything's subject to variation or change because we're dealing with a lot of different kind of dogs. We're dealing with a lot of different physical setups. Mm -hmm. So you have to work it. But let's say typically I'm fixing to start uh, Buck Schmuck's Auto Shop. And he's been getting broken into real serious thieves. And so we, we put it, we'll take our dog, we'll turn him loose and let him sniff around about 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour later, our fence kicker comes in He'll walk, he'll have this sack stuck back in his belt. He'll come up to the fence somewhere, kick the fence, make a noise, till the dog comes running up. When the dog comes running up, he goes into just agitation mode, just like he was doing on a training field. Only of course now, the dog doesn't have anybody holding a leash, he's not back tied, he's free to do whatever he wants to do. So our agitator has to really convince this dog that there's a threat. And this dog has to really be prepared to kick into defense drive and choose fight over flight. There's our dilemma. We have to somehow, first night on the job, when we're threatening this dog, if he chooses the fight, we have to have a means of rewarding him and making him feel like he accomplished something. And you can't cut a hole in the customer's fence and jump in there, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want to open the gate and take a chance on the dog running out and biting an innocent civilian. So what do you do? Well, you just go along the fence and you bounce it and you hit it and you kick it and the dog's going just crazy berserk. And then you pull your sack out of the 
from behind your back and you just fling it over the fence. If you can, if the fence is short enough, you can play tug of war. You can put it sometimes between the gates. You'll have a gap. You can stick it in there and you're going to play tug of war and make the dog fight for it, but then he's going to win it. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with a sleeve or a suit. So, yes, ma'am. Question. Um, let's see here. So what is in the older printing of the Kohler book that is not in the newer printing? Chapter 6, paragraphs 7, 14, and chapter 8. There's some chapters in there on when you get into the police dog and the guard dog business. They don't have those chapters in there anymore. Right. Which is what exactly what he's talking about now. How you go in there and train these dogs. Like you go in, Mr. Kohler said, in the book, you can find out the fight or flight. So you'll have the trainer go in and the, the agitator is hiding. Put the dog out and the evaluation is there and the guy will jump the fence and come in. Or fence tap and see what the dog's going to do. Right. So those chapters, those training chapters have changed a little bit. Yep. That ain't in there. Right. Yeah, and I, I still got an old original so I can... I got it though. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> So, so that's it. There's been changes. Okay. Because in some, some people think that the way things are nowadays, that Kohler's methods are inhumane, mm -hmm. and they're really not. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some of the stuff in there. It's the '60s. Yeah, you know, come on. You know, but that's what people say. It, but the method. Go ahead. I, I we could I could do a whole hour on on the humanity and the effectiveness of the Kohler method of dog training, and you know. Uh, some people look say, oh, Butcher's using treats. He's too, and other people, I've had them say, well, you got a prong collar on that dog. You're too hard. You're too harsh. And, yeah. then, and then I tell other people that everything I'm doing, and especially in the guard dog business, is, is based, the foundation came from the Kohler method of dog training. Mm -hmm. and, but you know what? Everyone I've ever heard talk about the Kohler method never understood what was really going on. Mm -mm. Um, Maybe we'll do that one of these days, but Me if you really read the book, you'll see that everything he went about, he went about with, with compassion and efficiency. And there is some scientific uh, reasoning in all this also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. along with compassion and his efficiency, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it's a great book. The, the reprinted versions, I, I know there's some of his family members, I think, that have taken over the method and own it, and, and I think they do a great job, but there's definitely, uh, if you got a, if you got a printed 1960 version like I do, you'll see some differences. There's a few things different. Yeah. That was just a few of them, there's other ones. Yeah. You know. But, and, I think we might run out of time here. Yeah, we got, oh, 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 we I got, got, we got two more minutes, we're okay. four minutes late. I got the one, so for, we got another question? They want a trivia question? They have one. You were going to give them a trivia question. We were? Oh, 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 what was that trivia question? One second. Oh, you've got it written down. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. What was it? I don't know, but continue, she'll... I got, I got one. I got one. It'll be great. Yeah, so, but anyway, cold right. method, great let, stuff, let, great let, stuff. Let, let, me go to, let me go to the one announcer. We're going to start doing... <clears throat> what are you fixing to do, Carolyn? Let you read that. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay, I got a trivia question, but before that, we will be uh, reopening uh, Canine Pro Sports. We're going to probably have a fall show for people who want a certified security dog. Uh, we, we do a security dog division, and that's the average uh, civilian and a patrol dog division. Uh, we'll be talking some more about that, but... I'm just getting a lot of people interested in, in mm -hmm. the guard dog business. So what we're going to do is work, we're going to probably have, probably have somewhere around the 1st of October, about a month and a little over a month away from now, we're going to run an agitator's seminar right here. It'll probably be a two or three day deal. This is not going to be one of those places where you put on a suit and run around and jog and they tell you you're mm -hmm. a dog trainer. We're going to actually teach you how to agitate, which means you have to learn how to read a dog, you have to know how to move a dog, you need to know how to make the dog move to you. So we'll be doing an actual agitator seminar, probably, like I said, first to mid-October. Um, we'll have more about that as, as we go on. It'll probably be a weekend affair if someone, if any of y'all are interested in, 
in learning about the nuts and bolts of, of uh, the real basic part of training yeah. a, a guard dog. We'll take care of all that. But trivia question in honor of memory and honor of Spartacus Bubicus, probably one of the greatest bulldogs of all time. Amen. Yep. Him. yep. Uh, Hell of a dog. We're going to do an American bulldog question. Why were bulldogs bred with the underbite? Why were bulldogs bred with the underbite? When this is way back when they were bull baiting in the 1600s. They oh. were bred with that underbite. Yeah, I wouldn't give too many uh, clues, but that's, that's we'll, only, we'll Google that and see what happens. That's the only clue we're going <laughs> to. And we got my security system bites bumper stickers. Mm -hmm. And we'll even throw in a t-shirt. We will. Yeah. And we'll do a we'll do a first and a second, the first two people to get it right. You can answer on here, you can call me, you can email me your answer, however you want to do it, and we'll see. Why were dog bulldogs bred with an underbite? Think about it, investigate, check it out, and we hopefully we'll see you all next week. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Subscribe, like, share, and don't forget my style dog training every yeah. week. Because you know what? It's all about the dogs, and it's all here.